Greetings, I'm John Spirit. I'm Archer Ezekiel. We need more Petrochem and so many other chemicals to get our damn IB Dynamo hatches, and welcome to Sky Greg Super Shorts. In order to work our way down to IB Dynamo hatches, which will triple the energy of our large combustion engines and give them 1.5 times fuel efficiency, we need to do a lot of different chemicals. Arch is currently working on Petrochem so that he can get us polyvinyl butyrol. For now, I'm going to work on Iridium. Iridium dust requires iridium chloride, which we can centrifuge from iridium metal residue, which specifically requires a large chemical reactor with rarest metal mixture. Aqua regia is just stuff we already have, nitric acid and hydrochloric acid, but this platinum group sludge will require us to apply nitric acid to some kind of purified ore. Purified ore is a bit of a theme here, because indium concentrate, which we'll also need, requires purified sphalerite and purified galena ore. Thankfully, as we discovered previously, on Program Circuit 2, purifying ores is very fast. The most efficient recipe to get platinum group sludge from nitric acid is purified sheldonite ore. We'll set up a recipe that turns 1N sheldonite ore into purified sheldonite ore, and then a chemical reactor recipe that makes all this stuff. The sulfuric nickel solution will automatically export into an electrolyzer, like I've been doing in other situations. The end sheldonite ore to purified sheldonite ore recipe will go into this advanced forge hammer to get dumped into the ore washer, instead of the top forge hammer. And now I can request platinum group sludge. We need to automate an HV centrifuge for this. Aqua regia is made in a mixer, so we'll put it in our MV mixer. And we'll set up a recipe which makes rarest metal mixture. I'm pretty sure we'll also need this inert metal mixture at some point to get ruthenium, but that's not necessary right now. Question mark, question mark, question mark? Ah, we need it for molten RTM alloy, and we will need that very soon, but at least we're getting it now. Ultimately, we're probably going to need many versions of this recipe for each of the individual dusts we get. Alright, so I can now request rarest metal mixture. It's a very slow recipe. We need an IV large chemical reactor in order to run the recipe that turns rarest metal mixture into iridium metal residue. Thankfully, we can manage this by turning this large chemical reactor into an IV large chemical reactor with two EV hatches. Seven, rarest metal mixture, which takes forever. And four, hydrochloric acid makes iridium metal residue and acidic osmium solution. For now, because it requires setting up a distillery and program circuit one, I am not going to attempt to turn the acidic os osmium solution into osmium tetroxide and hydrochloric acid. But at some point, we should probably get a crafting distillation tower. With the help of a pattern provider hooked up to a little subnet, we quickly get our chemical reactor running, using IV for 20 seconds, which is terrible. Okay, actually, it turns out somehow we can keep up. Who knows why? Iridium metal residue will go into a centrifuge, and the iridium chloride dust will go in a chemical reactor with hydrogen to make hydrochloric acid and iridium dust. To actually smelt iridium, we need both RGM alloy and an IV blast furnace. But I'm just going to craft 64 iridium dust, so we have it. It's currently crafting rarest metal mixture 358 times, which will take two and a half hours. Luckily, we're not trying to use this centrifuge for anything else. Meanwhile, however, I need to make the RTM alloy coils for my blast furnace. RTM requires ruthenium, which you can get from inert metal mixture. We'll use our IV large chemical reactor so that it's a little bit faster to turn 6 inert metal mixture and 1.5 sulfuric acid into 5 ruthenium tetroxide and rhodium sulfate. Rhodium sulfate makes sulfur trioxide, which I don't really feel like we need and don't feel like figuring out how to store it. Especially since we're the large chemical reactor, we can just make sulfuric acid from sulfur and water. And the bottleneck here where we make sulfuric acid is certainly the basic chemical reactor turning sulfur trioxide into sulfuric acid. I can't believe this is such a slow recipe. Just kidding. It turns out I had a machine controller on this thing which turned it off when the super tank had a million sulfuric acid in it, but I'm now doing it when there's like 14 million sulfuric acid in it. So I have no idea if this can consume our sulfur trioxide at full speed, so I'm just going to shove it all into this fluid trash can. Once you turn your ruthenium tetroxide into ruthenium, you can mix it on program circuit 1 to make RTM alloy dust from tungsten and molybdenum. You can just smelt molybdenum. Smelting RTM alloy does require extreme voltage blast furnaces. Luckily, we have upgraded our blast furnaces to EV at a cost. While I wait painstakingly long for all that RTM alloy, I have upgraded our EBF to IV using, you guessed it, 16 combustion generators. There's nothing good about this, but it doesn't lose quite enough power to run an IV blast furnace, so it's fine. 
Just kidding, we decided it was better to use those 16 combustion generators to run four more EV... EBFs. Because if we have fuck you power, what else are we supposed to do with it? We had a few mishaps when creating this build. Because as it turns out, when trying to transform up using a high voltage transformer, each side that accepts HV only accepts one amp. So you need a side for every amp that you want to help convert into a EV amp. So we've stuck this high voltage transformer inside these four combustion generators. By the way, what this suggests is that my system here needs four combustion generators leading into each side in order to get my four EV amps. Which is why we have now changed the EBF system. As far as I can tell, somewhere in here, wherever Arch did it, there is a 16x HV to EV converter. Actually, it's a 64 to 16 converter, so that it can take 16 HV amps in a single side. Amazing. Yep, it just requires a bunch of 16x cables. Very strange. And now we have an RTM alloy blast furnace. Arch did many other things while I was gone, which he will now proceed to describe in a voice that you have never heard from Arch, ever. Offline, I smelted 154 iridium ingots, each of which took 55 seconds each in a single EBF. And that concludes the first step to getting the insane voltage coils for the IV energy hatches. The next thing we need is an IV cutter for HP chips. And that requires laminated glass. How do we make laminated glass? We make it in a forming press with two tempered glass and one polyvinyl butyrol plate. This is how we're making polyvinyl butyrol. Along with 8 million other things. We start by processing raw oil, which Spirit has shown you before. Then I built a large multi-blocks desulfurizer, which will desulfurize all of the outputs from raw oil processing. Spirit thinks it's really expensive and that we should never fucking do it, but I think it was worth it because it goes incredibly fast to TM. After desulfurization, I have an extended pattern provider here for several different recipes, all of which are outputs from this 11 tall distillation column. After desulfurizing, it goes into our crackers. We have two crackers, one for circuit chip three and circuit chip one. Both of our recipes are steam cracked, but we have one recipe which is hydro cracked light fuel. Most hydro cracked recipes require a circuit setting of two or four, but light fuel doesn't have a steam cracked setting, so it can use one. And that's really lucky because that's the way we make octane. And octane is used to make high octane gasoline, our next fuel source, which we'll do later. After cracking, our recipes go into this distillation tower on request with a pattern provider. I made the decision to do everything from naphtha for now, since it's the fastest thing we make while processing oil, and it happened to be everything we needed for the polyvinyl butyrol. Each recipe needs a main output of the product we want. If a crafting recipe requires different products, it will know to use the other secondary outputs. So we don't need to worry about making too many extra chemicals. Up next, we have our chemical reactor array. We have four chemical reactors set to two because most of our recipes are in the two circuit or can exist in MV. We have one chemical reactor for high voltage for three of our recipes and one chemical reactor for circuit three for one recipe. Liquid polyvinyl butyrol is made with polybutyrolhyde and polyvinyl acetate. Butyraldehyde is made with propane, hydrogen gas, and carbon monoxide. Propane is one of our severely steam cracked naphtha results. Carbon monoxide could be made many ways, but I'm making it using carbon dust and carbon dioxide, which is made with carbon dust and oxygen gas. Of the four recipes, the one that takes oxygen and titanium tetrachloride is the most bang for your buck. Especially after Spirit increased the speed of our output, we have 1 million at titanium tetrachloride. 1.5 thousand buckets of titanium tetrachloride. Vinyl acetate requires ethylene, acidic acid, and more oxygen. Vinyl acetate is the only recipe that required the circuit setting of three. Ethylene is coming from severely steam cracked naphtha, and Spirit has already explained acetic acid. And when I request 10 buckets of polyvinyl butyrol, you can see all the chemicals being crafted. She lives. I designed this system with expandability in mind. For example, I already have recipes for butadiene and benzene, which will, be, which will eventually be used to make styrene butadiene rubber dust. But we'll cover that in a future episode. By the way, the desulfurizer requires zeolite dust to run. Whereas normally to desulfurize, you need hydrogen gas. And zeolite's just smelted zeolite ore. 
All right, so now that we have that polyvinyl butyrol, we have an HV forming press that's turning tempered glass and polyvinyl butyrol into laminated glass. I needed the laminated glass to make this IV cutter, which is just sitting here because we can't power it yet. We had a few other hiccups to make this IV cutter. The tungsten carbide buzzsaw blade was most conveniently made in a lathe in HV. But now we have an HV lathe, so we can automate certain things faster, probably. The IV machine holes need polytetrafluoroethylene, which we have. But the main hiccup ends up being that platinum cables and other IV cables cannot use normal rubber. We have to use styrene butadiene rubber. Or, I guess, silicone rubber, but I, I don't know. And styrene butadiene rubber is something we have the ability to make. We are, of course, using the recipe which adds oxygen in order to make way more raw styrene butadiene rubber dust from butadiene and styrene. As Arch may have mentioned, styrene can be retrieved from ethylene and benzene. So now we have styrene butadiene rubber. Another major object we need is the IV assembler. There's nothing particularly crazy here, but I don't really want to make an IV robot arm or conveyor myself. So I will now proceed to claim IV quests until one of them gives me the shit I need. Here's my IV conveyor module. This is quality content, everyone. We got a Quantum Tank 5. Hi, I would like something other than Quantum Tank 5s. Yay, IV robot arm. Now I can make my IV assembler basically for free. I'm also using IV circuits I got from quest claiming. These silly IV chemical reactors require huge polyethylene fluid pipes, which are an extreme mold that we haven't made before. With this IV chemical reactor, I can now make HPIC wafers. Assuming I have, you know, vanadium gallium and indium gallium phosphide. Thankfully, Arch has set up a recipe for purified galena ore. Purified galena ore, as well as purified sphalerite and sulfuric acid, can make indium concentrate in a mixer. For some weird reason, indium concentrate can either be made into small piles of indium dust or large normal indium dust. But the recipe that makes normal indium dust requires a program circuit of four. And we don't have any chemical reactors like that, so I'm just going to use the tiny ass recipe. The lead zinc solution I will certainly toss. And the aluminum sulfite's basically useless as well. To make the phosphorus for the indium gallium phosphide, I'm going to once again use the method I was using before, where you electrolyze phosphate, which will electrolyze from monazite. Strangely enough, we don't have an HV autocrafting electrolyzer, so I'll just use our EV machines, I suppose. To get the liquid vanadium gallium I need for my HPIC wafers, I need to melt down vanadium gallium ingots, which means we need vanadium gallium dust in an EBF. Unfortunately, because we don't have argon currently on access, we're forced to use our much shittier EBF. But IV's pretty fast, so it's fine. HPIC wafers cut incredibly poorly, and unfortunately we will have to use these for a while. But we'll survive, I guess, on 4 EV amps for 60 seconds. I'm gonna start by making 4 HPIC chips. That will allow us to make 2 IV dynamo hatches. Thankfully, everything except making the HPIC wafers is very fast. At last I can make our 2 IV dynamo hatches. This took forever! Now, <laughs> we're installing our IV dynamo hatches. We have EV transformers to turn the IV amps into EV amps. We are exporting oxygen freakishly slowly, but that's okay because they're not used very fast. And oxygen boosted. Now we have six EV amps, or one and a half IV amps. Which isn't a lot, but it's honest work. That amounts to, given the bonus in power, one IV amps worth of gasoline. And if you remember, we only have about 14 of that. However, we're still not even running gasoline at full speed, because we're kind of dumb. Only at the point that we are using the naphtha we're producing at speed will we actually be creating gasoline at the speed our system can support. But we have a variety of random bottlenecks that I don't feel like fixing because I could just upgrade to high-octane gasoline and solve all my problems. But that will be for a future episode. For now, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for listening to Arch also, besides me. As always, if you have any feedback, we'd love to hear it. We hope you enjoyed!